Hey, Natalie. Today we're gonna make an orange Swiss meringue buttercream vanilla sponge cake. Yes, it's a mouthful. And have you ever heard of this cake before or seen it in a store? Probably not, because I just came up with it. Well, okay, there might be some other person who has made it. I'm not saying I have exclusivity on this, but it is probably not a very common combination, but it's a very refreshing cake. And this orange cake is so delicious that it will not only outshine its glutinous cousins, but will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. this recipe before so it will be a complete experiment and I will probably make a few mistakes so have some chocolates with me while I'm trying to figure out and navigate how I'm gonna do it I have some basics though I do know how to make a Swiss meringue buttercream and I have done that in the Swiss meringue Nutella buttercream banana sponge cake recipe so I'm gonna do the same but I'm gonna add some orange flavor to it and for the filling, I'm thinking I'm going to make a variation of a pastry cream. So instead of using milk, I'm going to use orange juice. And then for the cake, I'm going to use my vanilla sponge cake recipe. And I'm going to feature that in next week's videos. So the basics are there. Oh, and I forgot. I want to try out how to make candied oranges for the decoration of this cake. I mean, what can go wrong? Worst case, my friend Karen, for whom I'm making this cake for, won't have a cake and I'm gonna run to the store and buy a cake and pretend it's mine or something like that, but that would really be the worst case scenario. So let's try it out. To make it a little bit easier on myself, I pre-baked the vanilla sponge cake and for this episode, I do need to slice it into three layers so I can add later on my orange filling. The thing which will take the most time will be the candied oranges because technically they should be dried out overnight. So I'm going to start with the candied oranges and for that I need to start slicing my orange. The next step you have to do when you want to candy any fruits is you have to cook it in a simple syrup. So I'm going to measure and add to the pot 400 milliliters of water and I'm going to add 300 grams of sugar. Now I'm going to just dissolve the sugar in the water and try to get it to a boiling point. I'm just going to stir it occasionally to help the sugar to dissolve faster. The water reached the boiling point, I'm going to add now all my oranges. And I'm going to lower the heat now and cook it in for another 45 minutes. So I cooked my orange slices for 45 minutes and I let them cool down in the pot. Now I'm going to transfer them to a baking rack to let them dry out. And you can let the oranges dry outside for 24 hours or 48 hours. Um, but I'm gonna cheat, so I'm gonna put it in the oven at a very low temperature and leave it there for an hour to dry the candied fruits much faster. I'm gonna start making my Swiss meringue buttercream. And the first thing I have to do for that is I have to separate the egg whites from the egg yolk. And then I'm gonna weigh around 300 grams of sugar, which is one and a half cups. And I'm gonna add that sugar to the egg white. To make the Swiss buttercream, I have to do the same steps as I did with my Nutella buttercream in the banana sponge cake recipe. So I have to heat up the egg white and the sugar over a double boiler and get it to 160 degrees Fahrenheit to make sure I pasteurize the eggs. I'm gonna use my handheld mixer to quickly dissolve the egg whites and the sugar in the double boiler. And then I'm gonna to switch to my spatula to gently move the liquid around and to make sure the double boiler evenly heats the liquid. And I'm gonna check the temperature in between until it reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit. It has reached temperature and I'm gonna move it off the double boiler. And I'm gonna transfer now my egg yolk and my sugar into the bowl of my stand mixers, where I continue beating it until it has reached a stiff peak. I'm gonna set now the stiffened meringue aside and wait it to cool down. And the next thing I wanna do is work on my orange flavor. And I'm thinking that I wanna reduce my orange juice just to give it a little bit more punch. And I'm gonna use that as my base for my Swiss meringue buttercream orange flavor as well as for my orange pastry cream or my faux orange pastry cream. 
So I'm gonna start reducing my orange juice. I'm gonna check how much I got left for my half a liter of orange juice. I have about one cup left, or a little bit less than a cup, so I reduced it by 50%. What I found is if I want to use any kind of fruit juices in a buttercream or pastry cream, I normally need to thicken it up a bit to help the cream to hold its shape. And that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to thicken the orange juice with a starch. So I'm going to pour the orange juice back into the pot. And I have some of the simple syrup left, which I used for the candied oranges. And it took out quite a bit of an orange flavor. So I'm going to add half a cup of my simple syrup to it. And I have now about one and a half cup of orange juice and syrup. And I'm gonna check for the flavor. Mm. Oh wow, that's very tasty. It has a little bit of the pungentness of the orange juice with the taste of the rind, which is a little bit more bitter. So it's a nice combination. And to thicken the orange juice and the simple syrup, I'm gonna use a quarter cup of tapioca stuff. So I'm gonna add the starch and then I'm gonna stir it to thicken it up and the orange syrup thickened up. It has a very elastic sort of consistency with tapioca. It's definitely a little bit different than cornstarch but I know that some people of celiacs have also corn allergies so I wanted to try it out with just tapioca and see the difference. I am finished now with my reduced thickened orange juice and I'm going to use half of it later to add to my Swiss meringue buttercream to add this nice orange flavor. I have to get started though now on my faux orange pastry cream. And the first thing I'm going to do for that again is heat up the orange juice. I'm going to take the six egg yolks which I had remaining from earlier when I separated from the egg whites and I'm going to add four tablespoons of cornstarch to it and going to give it a good whisk. When the orange juice is warm, I'm going to add some of it to the egg yolk and then I'm going to pour the egg yolk and the orange juice back to the remaining orange juice and stir it until it thickens up. And I can feel now how the orange juice thickens up. And I'm going to take it off the heat. It does need a bit more sugar. So I'm going to add about a quarter cup first and see what happens. And I'm going to use icing sugar because it melts faster. I would even add more sugar to it, so that it's about 100 grams of sugar by now. Yeah, so about 150 grams of sugar is enough. I'm gonna add also my earlier mixture of the orange juice with the tapioca to it because it became a little bit too gummy with tapioca starch. And I'm gonna mix that under. And any pastry cream has to be strained. So I'm gonna use my German strainer thingy, add my pastry cream. Okay, here's as much a strained pastry cream I can get out of it. Now keep in mind it's very gummy compared to when I use it, make it with milk. And because it is so gummy, I do want to put the cakes together before I finish up the buttercream. And to finish it up means I need to assemble the cake. So while it's relatively hot and not yet completely stiffened, I'm going to spread the faux pastry cream on the top of the cake. I add my second layer, add another scoop and try to spread it while it's a bit wobbly. What I could do too is I could put it in a mousse form which would help keeping the shape better. So, and I might do that trick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the mousse cake ring around it. I'm gonna try to press the mousse so it becomes much more equal and evenly distributed. Then I'm gonna release it and I'm gonna put it in the fridge because this will harden up. I'm gonna finish now the butter cream. By now the meringue is at room temperature and can safely add the butter without melting it, or in this case the vegan or dairy-free substitute. But before I'm gonna add the dairy substitute, I'm gonna add the remaining of the faux orange pastry cream. And I'm gonna keep on whisking to combine the meringue and the faux orange mixture. I have here my prepared cut into cubes vegan substitute, which I'm gonna add now one by one to my Swiss buttercream. And I'm gonna keep on whisking the buttercream until the butter and the meringue are really well combined. And here is my orange buttercream. The tapioca cream did harden up. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quick add the um, crumb layer to the cake. And what the crumb layer does is it just makes sure 
that literally the crumbs don't leave the cake. And then it's much easier to finish up the cake. It's not very pretty. That's good enough for the crumb layer. I'm gonna pop the cake now for 20 minutes, half an hour to an hour in the freezer to make sure the dairy-free substitute or the butter hardens up. The crumb layer should be set now and lightly frozen. And I'm gonna add now the finishing buttercream layer. Now I'm gonna use one of those cake scrapers. I'm gonna repeat this process until the cake is nice and smooth. And for the final touches, I'm gonna add now the candied orange slices. And here's the final orange buttercream cake. So let's try it out. It's very refreshing. As a hint of the bitterness of the orange rind, and then the creaminess of the buttercream with the fluffiness of the sponge cake. It's definitely the perfect summer cake. Now, um, given how much rain is coming down right now, it's more spring than summer. I can also see it as main course to have a seafood paella, and then this orange cake is the dessert for it. So my friend Colin picked up the birthday cake for his wife for her birthday, and I'm happy to report they were very pleased with that cake. So belated, happy birthday, Karen. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, learning how to make an orange buttercream cake and maybe try it yourself in the summertime. If you like to watch me try different types of recipes, please subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. 